dear learners i welcome you all in niu studio myself dr aman from central university of jammu i am going to have some interaction with you people of the paper 510 on the topic role of first hand experience in children learning first of all i would like to narrate my learning objectives which are as at present interaction or after present interaction the learners will be able to achieve the following they will be aware of the first hand experiences in children's learning they will understand the meaning of the term learning experiences their classification and importance they will specify the criteria for choosing first hand experiences use of various teaching devices for providing learning experiences they will be aware about hands on methods for teachers they will enlist resources in developing hands on science activities so now friends we are coming to the main topic so firstly in this topic i would like to discuss role of first hand experience in children learning in the process of learning child not only uses the cognitive domain but also psychomotor and affective domains friends uh, benjamin stephen bloom has classified some learning objectives as you must have studied in some paper of your dled program he divided whole objectives into three types that is cognitive affective and psychomotor there was the time when we were using only cognitive domain that was only related to the development of the knowledge maybe with the help of the development of rote memory but later on psychologists worked on the various issues related issues and they came up that when we use multiple sense organs as receiver of stimuli so learners get better chances to develop conceptual clarity use of body parts enhances skills and formulate attitude which is possible only through first hand experiences because of use of more number of sense organs learning experiences get concretized experiences of different types and making learning comparatively permanent continuing with first hand experiences i would like to explain basing children's learning on content that can be experienced first hand guarantees a measure of meaning children are not asked to gain knowledge second hand by listening to some else tell them about a distant place or time so in first hand you have not to listen something from other people you have to do everything with your own hands rather children are involved in touching taking part tasting and smelling things in their here and now world by doing so they are the ones who are receiving information directly and making sense of it piaget has worked a lot in the developmental stages of the students so he has quoted piaget's work fully documented that first hand experiences are necessary if children are to learn think and construct knowledge when children actually handle objects in their environment they gain knowledge of the physical properties of the world in which they live so friends first hand experiences very very important to strengthen the learning of the students as they experiment with a wide variety of objects and materials they learn that some things are heavy others light some are rough some smooth others sharp or rounded these concepts cannot taught cannot be taught through direct instruction but can only be learned through first hand experience so friends don't let your students to to teach sciences with second hand experiences if you are teaching about rough surface to little students let them feel what actually rough surfaces with these things you can develop fully the faculties of the 
minds of the students and their learning will be strengthened. Further, when children engage in first hand experiences, their minds are active as their bodies are. By handling objects and observing things in the world, children begin to compare them. They classify and sequence objects and things relating new information to their existing ideas of how the world works, fitting it into their schemes or ideas. When information does not fit their existing ideas, they change these or create new ones. As they do so, they are constructing their own knowledge and storing it as concepts, rules or principles. Same things Piaget has explained friends. Suppose when the child is in you know birth stage, after birth, after some months, if you give any toy which best fit in his mouth, he will take it again and again in his mouth. But you make him a big one which is not fitting it in his mouth, then he will try to change his cognitive structure which is already lying there. He will try to grab with the hands, with the feet. So, child will always to try to change, to manage how new learning can be assimilated in him. Proceeding ahead, I would like to add when children act on their environment, they are figuring out how to do things. They learn how to balance blocks, care for themselves and others and become part of a democratic group. Through daily first hand experiences, children have the opportunity to confirm or change their ideas about how things work and what they can do with the things in their world. These initial, often incomplete and tentative hypotheses and schemes about their world are the foundation on which all subsequent learning is built. So friends, let the students to think over the solutions of different uh, problems which we usually call hypothesis. Let them frame hypothesis. Only after then, they will be able to develop new thinking and will be able to solve the same problem with some new ideas, new path. So that way their learning will become stronger. Now friends, before going ahead, I will like to explain with you people or discuss with you people the term learning experiences. What are learning experiences? Learning experiences refers to any interaction, course, program or other experience in which learning takes place. So friends, any kind of interaction, any kind of course which is strengthening, strengthening your knowledge, that kind of experience will be called learning experience. And these kind of experiences friends may be traditional or non-traditional. Some things may be learning from your, uh, from your teachers traditionally. You will be learning many things directly from the teachers or some things you may be learning indirectly, maybe through some activities, some games, some software applications, etc. Now, we can classify these experiences into two categories. These are direct experiences and indirect experiences. So, firstly, I would like to discuss with you people what are direct experiences and how they are beneficial for the learning of sciences. So far, direct experiences are concerned related to the learning activity, they involve first hand experiences with various objects or symbols. It includes what is commonly referred to as perceptual learning. Perceptual learning friends means what is to be perceived with your sense organs. So it may, may not be same as you are uh, having from direct experiences. Perceptual learning is a bit different. Since it includes experiences with symbols such as used in sciences, perceptual learning applies to experiences depending upon seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, handling and manipulating things in different ways. When we use such terms as sweet, bitter, soft, hard, tall, short, smooth, rough, we get the meaning through perceptual learning. We can use these symbolic words 
for describing various things. Now friends, proceeding ahead about direct experience, I would like to quote that some illustrations of direct experiences on hands-on are as, firstly you can provide the children as observing and experimenting with materials and operators. You can directly give the operators in the hands of the students. You can tell the students what actually test tube is, what is a flask. You can allow the students to touch these things. Then constructing models, plans, charts, etc. Drawing a description either orally or in writing. Presenting a description either orally or in writing. Then summarizing, stating, generalizations, etc. Listening important facts points and so on. So this was about direct experiences, how we can provide direct experiences to the students in relation to the teaching of sciences. Now I will come to the indirect experiences. This is a type of experience through which we acquire the learning outcomes without first-hand experience. It makes use of direct experiences of others. So friends, these are opposite to the direct experiences. Thereby, you are directly giving the things, give, giving the objects in the hands of the learners. But in indirect experiences, they have to learn with the experiences of the others. We learn much through the experiences of others. These experiences include such activities as reading, looking at pictures, listening to lectures and discussions and so forth. Such learning activities are very important since it is possible for us to have all first-hand experiences. You can enjoy the thrill of mountaineering by listening to a talk of a mountaineer and field visits, excursions, etc. As you see, whenever you are reading a book, whole you know, picture of that particular book, book comes in your mind. So that way you are having the indirect experience of that scene which is indicated, indicated in a particular book or drama. There are some examples of giving students indirect experience which may be reading or discussion in books, magazines, papers, etc. Listening to oral discussions, lectures and so on. Observing pictures, maps, charts, models, etc. It is obvious that in practical learning situations, we cannot completely separate direct and indirect learning activities, friends. We have to go in combination that sometimes we can provide direct experiences to the students and in some situations, indirect experience may be equally beneficial for the students. Now, why hands-on experience in science are important? So, proceeding ahead in this direction, I would like to discuss with you people the importance of learning experiences. The direct experiences are most effective, but we can't give it always to the students like earthquake, war, flood, etc. We can show the pictures, friends, of a war, of a flood, of earthquake, but we cannot let him experience these things directly. Many times, a teacher can create live pictures of the things with his imagination and explain it very effectively. It is more effective than direct experiences even at times. For the day-to-day -day teaching, indirect experiences are more practically applicable because friends, they will be consuming less time. Indirect, indirect experiences are easy to be provided to the students. While in direct experience, you have to devote more time to the students and you will be feeling some kind of difficulty in the completion of the syllabus. So by observing indirect experiences, you can teach effectively. Verbal experiences play an important role in teaching learning process if they are used effectively. Now, friends, I'm going to discuss about the criteria for choosing hands-on experiences. What is the criteria for choosing hands-on experiences for the learners? First thing is, it should be directly related to the instructional goals. That means, what you have decided earlier, in which direction you want to take the students or you want to direct the students' learning. So, your experiences, your criteria should follow those things. Secondly, 
it should be related to the life situations. It should be appropriate to the maturity level of the learners. That means what is the age, how much mature students are that you have to take into consideration while you are providing the hands-on experiences to the students. You cannot give some delicate things in the hands of the students. Even some dangerous chemicals cannot be given in the hands of the small children. While selecting the experience, availability of a material and time should be considered. It should be varied and rich in content. Now friends, I would like to discuss with you people the learning experiences and use of various teaching devices. What kind of de teaching devices can be used to provide first hand experiences to the learners? Friends, learning experiences are not merely confined to classroom. Teacher will have therefore to use various teaching devices for providing suitable hands-on experiences. Here are some of the devices. First, I will come to the experiments. Experiments provide learning experiences to achieve objectives such as skill in handling operators, observation and understanding, etc. skill related to objectives. Secondly, audio-visual aids. Audio-visual aids include radio, films, film strips, epidioscope. On friends, in epidioscope, you can uh, directly project some picture on the screen. Like if you want to project a book on the screen, screen you can put that book on the epidioscope that will be projected directly on the screen. So, you can use that also for providing first hand experiences. So, radio film strips, films, epidioscope, overhead projector, slide projector, computer, assisted teaching with the help of mass media, internet, web or YouTube based teaching. These can also be used for providing experiences to the students. Now, activities based on teaching like dramatization, debating, various curriculums, based competitions, etc. So, friends, by using again dramatization or dramas, debates and some competitive activities, you can again provide first hand experiences to the students. Now, I would like to discuss hands on experiences pertaining to the science subject. Science teacher will have to use demonstration, experimentation and observation for giving necessary learning experiences in teaching of science. The list of some of the activities is as below. Number one, demonstrating experiments in classroom and laboratories for encouraging students to observe and derive conclusions. Second, let students perform experiments at themselves. Allow students to handle operators, to locate the defects if any and set it in order. You can also develop a museum with the help of students in which students will be happy in performing such activities. You can also develop some medicinal, botanical or butterfly garden with the help of your students which will be very 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 beneficial per, for providing first hand experiences to the learners. Encouraging students to maintain records of various observations like plant growth, day to day temperature, misuse of water and electricity, birds, animals etc. So friends, you can ask your students to maintain such kind of records as temperature variations day to day. He can develop a good uh, checklist of these things that after one hour, what was the temperature of a, in a particular day. So this will again be very, very beneficial for the students. Encouraging students to find out cause and effect relationship in day to day situations, developing scientific attitude through discussion and experimentation. Also, you can ask your students to observe stars and planets at night. You can ask your or you can guide your students about some of the planets. You can see some planets are easily visible with naked eye also. So you should let your students to have first hand experience about these things. You can visit to planetarium also, conduct science club activities in some 
uh, educational institutions some science clubs are operational as a teacher you can also create such club under which you can uh, organize various activities related to the learning of the sciences then preservation of energy sources like water electricity plants or much more other resources now friends i am going to show you some pictures uh, which are indicating how we can give you the first hand experiences to the learners as you see in the first picture that is floating wall activities you can see how a, a student is using this activity with the help of this you can explain many things to the student that is the direction of the air how you have to blow the air uh, how this round ball is hanged up in the air you can explain the related concept like this in the second picture you can see a uh, walking water how you know uh, they have filled glass of water with of different colors and they have put some cloth uh, in that water and with the capillary you can see the water is uh, proceeding from one glass to the other so you can tell such kind of activities Uh, to the student and ask them to perform with their own hands in next picture you can see the students putting on the mask uh, on their faces of different vegetables fruits and with these things obviously they will be able when they are putting the mask of a fruit okay so they they can tell about they can explain the taste of that fruit the color of that fruit that way they will be getting the first hand experiences so much more friends you can use such kind of experiences with the learners now i am indicating some of the hands on methods for the teachers teachers can also be equipped to provide students the first hand experiences for example firstly they should be allowed to attend workshop consider peer coaching and visit museums attend state regional and national conferences to increase exposure to methods materials and a wider community of peers school administrator it is the duty of the school administrators friends also that they should also encourage their teachers to have uh, the experience of such activities and tell these activities to their students start using hands on methods inside classrooms teachers also learn best by doing so doesn't be afraid to roll up your sleeves dig in and enjoy the experience so teachers can do a lot in these directions now friends in the coming slide i would like to discuss with you people about the resources in developing hands on experiences in sciences and i would like to quote some of the activities so first thing is textbooks science periodicals and nsta publications use this excellent reference material to help you develop ideas for hands on activities for for best results consider using educational resources information center that is eric a federal funded agency or system that maintains the world's largest education related bibliographic database second proven programs discover appropriate activities by studying proven programs for example friends i have quoted these two programs that is promising and exemplary programs and materials in elementary and secondary school science i just explored this thing on the internet friends and and i would like to share this thing in the next slide with you people this while you are putting this whole writing on the google you will find this thing that this document contains 36 programs and or material listing that there were nominated and by at least three persons and for which there was evidence of the quality of the program or material reviewers looked for positive evaluation data on the impact of the materials on students or other information that assess the quality of the program or material or both this resulted in a selected listing of programs and materials print or non print material for the students so you can search such type of already developed programs with which you can enrich your students to provide hands on experiences for the learning of the sciences of course you can attend some conferences co teachers can also tell you a lot about this thing 
past activities, we can learn from the past activities which we have performed uh, in the past learning experiences. So friends, with these things, I would like to conclude with these things that providing first hand experiences to the students is a very, very important thing. It is the duty of the teacher, duty of the administrators that we should think in this direction and we, at least at lower level, we shouldn't teach sciences, but we should teach experiences that how sciences can be inherited, how we can develop science in our minds, how we can strengthen the knowledge of science in our minds with the help of performing the activities with our own hands. With these words, I would like to thank you all the learners. Hopefully, this whole interaction will be very helpful to you. And I am also thankful to NOUS team. Thank you.